Hello and welcome. Today we are going to be talking about page objects. And as usual, we're going to start with some code that's not so good and refactor to some code that is hopefully better. Let's start by taking a look at this spec. As you can see, this app is concerned with managing events. And right now, users can create and cancel events. Now, by the way, I might put these scenarios in a real app in separate files, but for demonstration purposes, I've included them in the same one to make our lives a little easier for now. Now, I imagine, since we're all programmers, the first thing that jumps out to you is the duplication at the start of each of these specs, and you probably are already itching to refactor that. But I'm actually going to point out something a little bit different for our first change, and that is the text on this line and this line. Now, these are both kind of haha uh, -ha funny little jokes included in the specs. But the thing to notice is that they don't matter at all for the spec. These are irrelevant details when it comes to these specs. Notice that the description doesn't show up in our final expectation. And in fact, I could change this whole string to that, and my tests will pass. Now, I do need this test or this line to exist, because if I remove it, we get a validation error. But I want this line to look more boring. Right now, it's too interesting. It draws the eye. And the fact that there's so much detail in it suggests to me, as the reader of the test, that it's important for the outcome of the test. And so the test is kind of subtly setting the wrong expectation. It is subtly lying to me. So let's fix that. OK, so believe it or not, with that tiny change, these tests are both actually kind of better. Um, both those lines now look really boring, which is good because they are and should be boring. They don't have anything to do really with this test. They're kind of just noise. And by the way, as we refactor forward, we're going to be moving this noise further and further from sight. But this is already a nice step forward. Let's do the same thing with the title. In this test, the title matters. I removed the duplication by pulling it into a local variable. But this title here needs to show up here. And so because of that, I've given it a more interesting looking name. And that's because I actually do want this to catch your eye a little bit. And when I see something like ABC123, I think, OK, this test is telling me this value is important. It's going to show up later again. It's unique. I want to make sure it's unique on the page. Uh, and so ah, oh yes, there we go. It's in the expectation. So this test is also no longer subtly lying to me. It's confirming to me with its structure and the string that this value is sort of important. Great. And down here, this title doomed does not show up in the expectation, is not important for this test. And so I'm going to make this title really simple. Great. And so with just a little bit of thought and a little bit of renaming, we have made these tests a bit better. But let's keep going. We can do better. We can get this way more awesome. Let's actually go ahead now and create a helper method that will deduplicate these specs. As usual, I'm going to write the code I wish I had and then let the errors guide me. Our method is not defined. Wrong number of arguments. And now failing because we didn't actually copy over the body. Just discovered something. This is supposed to be event title. This was not blowing up before because we have a capybara method called title, and it has shadowed our local variable, or made it look like we had a local variable that we didn't, which is unfortunately confusing and one of those dangers of mixing in methods into your specs. OK, now we're back to green, as we might expect. Let's use our new method in the spec down here, too. Cool, and we're good. I'll throw that method at the bottom of the page. 
Now we are green and clean. Okay, so what's next? The next thing to notice is that we have a little bit of an object-oriented smell here. And it's not a very smelly smell, but it's something that's worth knowing about. Notice here, we are passing in event title to the create event method. And then here we are passing an event title to the have CSS method. And you could generalize this form to this. You see this fairly frequently in OO code, where you have a method on some object and you're passing in some data, and you have another method on a different object and you're passing in some, the same data, and so forth. When I see this pattern, I find it often causes really good things to happen to my code if I create a new object and make the A instance data and then move these methods to be instance methods on that object. Something like this. And now, since A is instance data, I could just make a foo method that looked like this and reference A directly. This is one of those good OO rules to be aware of, or OO suggestions, patterns to be aware of, that having your data in the same place as the methods that operate upon it is often a good idea and will cause nice things to happen to your code. So what would that look like in this case? Well, in this case, we would create an object that had the create event method on it, and the title would become instance state, and we would also then move this have CSS method into it as well. And that is a great job for a page object. So let's create one now. And by create one now, I meant let's pretend one already exists and then let the errors drive us into making it. Now, to actually create the event, we're going to have to move in this create event method, although that's going to cause us to need to include some new stuff. I'm going to copy over the body. Change that to title, and then when we run, we see that we're missing the path helper that Rails gave us previously. So let's mix that in. And I also know we're going to need the capybara DSL methods. But spell it right. Awesome, we are back to green. And since we're green, oh, by the way, let's just review real quick. Notice we now create an object, pass in the instance data, and then call this method on it. We have not fixed our smell yet. But let's come back to that in one second after we use it in this other scenario. Okay, cool. Now let's come back and actually move this method in here. Now to be clear, I don't actually want to move this expectation into my new uh, page object. I want to move just this have CSS method. That's the thing that takes the event title. And I like that this expect call is actually in my spec as opposed to in my page object. So let's try something like this. Our spec is telling us that that method doesn't exist. Our spec is helpfully calling exist question mark on our new object. That's just some fanciness our spec gives you.
Nice. And we're back to green. So check out how nice and high level this spec is these days. Looking pretty good. Of course, because we went and moved that method down there, I think we should probably also move this one. Let's do that now. Nice. So check out the gas we're cooking with now. These specs are both really high level and they're high level because they're using this new page object that we created. So I didn't explicitly stop and say what page objects do, but I have a hunch you're starting to get the gist, which is they act as a go-between for your tests and the actual page itself. Notice that neither of our specs now contain any knowledge about the structure of the page. Uh, in particular, they don't know anything about the HTML or the classes in that HTML. That is pretty awesome. In addition, we now have this nice high-level DSL to describe how to do things, and we can move in this as well. Why leave this click button behind when we can actually move this in to our new object too? Bam. There we go. Now we're looking good. So currently our specs are shielded from HTML structure, from class names, even from button titles. And yes, you could of course uh, come down here and use IATN on this text and this text, and you probably should as well, but that's not the focus of the screencast, so I'm not gonna do that here. Next, since we have this new class, we should also clean up a little bit of duplication in this new object we just created. Notice that we are grabbing the UL here in both these methods. And we can pull this into something a little bit cleaner. Ciao. Notice briefly that if we ever change where the event attributes are located, we have exactly one place in our test suite to update. That's pretty awesome. Also, because I was able to shove this method under the private keyword, it tells you that this is a pretty boring implementation detail of this object, which is another one of those subtle implicit messages that I love to send with code whenever possible. Now for our quick victory dance, let's go ahead and actually move this object into where I would normally put it in a real Rails app, which is in spec support pages directory. So I'll make a pages directory. Reindent that, close that out. And now if we try to run this, we're gonna get errors about the constants. And the quickest way to fix that is just to do this. That'll take us back to green. However, I like to actually automatically require everything in spec support, and you do that in the Rails helper by uncommenting this line right here. Don't get too hung up by the presence of the word page right here, or the presence of the word page in the pattern name of page object. It's true that in this case, our page object represents most of the events show page interactions that our test had, but it doesn't have to be like that. I think there actually are three levels that you can have uh, and use page objects effectively. So the first is a component level. 
So you could have a page object that simply wraps something as simple as a search field in your app, or maybe a date picker. A date picker is a nice example. Say you have a date picker and it has a bunch of gnarly classes that you have to click through and know about from your specs. You could wrap that up in a pretty simple page object that just handles the clicking and maybe looks for presence of certain things on the page. Uh, that's a perfect tiny refactoring. And that's one of the things I like about this pattern is that you can introduce it into your app slowly. The next level is closer to what we just implemented, which I would say is the page level. So in our case, this basically looks like events show is roughly what we just implemented. Uh, so you can have a page handle all the interactions on that page. And finally, something like flow or experience. You could go ahead and combine multiple different pages in your app into one page object. Something like a sign up is a great example. So you might have a page object that has methods like this. Etc. So don't think too small and don't think too big. You can introduce page objects at all levels of your test. And the great thing is when you start building up these page and experience objects, you can compose the smaller component objects that you've created. This is a wonderful feature of this object. Now, by the way, it's worth mentioning that this thing does have a trade-off, this, this new technique, and that, of course, is indirection. So we have, in fact, dried up our code a bit, uh, and we have shielded ourselves from changes, but you can no longer see in our specs exactly what's happening. These specs are high level, which is nice, but if you do want to know what's going on in this create for some reason, you are going to have to dive down into another object. That's pretty much always the drawback of uh, indirection versus dry. And finally, one final note of this, it's probably best to refactor two page objects rather than starting with page objects. I like to just get the code out there and working and tested first. And then once I start to notice that there's some duplication in my specs, then I refactor two page objects. It wouldn't be terrible to go directly to them, but I think they work a little bit better once you have a better idea of what the structure of your code is and where the duplicated bits are. So as always, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.